Ahem. Is this thing on? <laughs> hey, it's Graham Breitenstein, the host of This Week with Drunk Astrology, the podcast. And you know, at the top of every new year, it can be so easy to fall into a mindset that's like, well, it's a new year. I guess I'll like do some goals. I don't know, a couple friends are doing dry January. Maybe I should do dry January. But you know what? That's not you, and that is most certainly not me. You know, we start 2024 with Mercury, the planet of our thinking mind, stationing direct. So that means the planet that rules the way our brain functions is stopped. So we experience some brain fog, a lack of clarity. We might be a little hungry for change, a little hungry to set some goals, but we're not functioning at our full potential. That's okay, because your astrologer here has created a free resource for you to clear through your mental muck. I'm calling it the Manifest Big in 2024 journal, and it is absolutely free, 0.00. Free 99. This thing is full of science backed prompts around goal setting and astrological insights because the timing of setting your goals is just as important. And that's exactly what astrology teaches us. So, to get it, you're going to go to drunkastro.com backslash amazing year. And in less than a minute, you're going to download your PDF and you're going to start getting to work. And here's what's cool. In 2024 and for the next 20 years, Pluto, the planet of power, it's the source of our power as a collective, changes into Aquarius. So that means the source of power for all of us to tap into lies in Aquarian themes. What are Aquarian themes, you might be asking? Aquarian themes are community, collaboration, and communication. You are not going to be working through this journal alone. No, 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 no. You and I are going to be working together to fill this out and to manifest our most amazing year ahead. And here's the challenge. I implore you to bring in people that you admire, people that you respect, people that you love, people that you care for, whether that's family, friends, your partners, your co-workers, your teammates. Bring them into this process. The more we share this resource, the more we are all tapping into the power that is available to us. It is no longer the solo Capricorn journey. Pluto's been there, done that since 2008. For the next 20 years, our power lies in community. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to do this together. We're going to share this with the people that we love, that we respect, that we want to see win. So again, go to drunkastro.com backslash amazing year. It is also, if you scroll up, the first link in the show notes. Download that PDF in less than a minute. And you and I are going to do this together. Don't miss this opportunity to create your most amazing year You're going to thank me later, I promise. So now that you got your journal, why don't we hop into this week? And I can see years from now in a bar Talking over a football game With that same big loud opinion But nobody's listening Washed up and ranting about the same old bitter thing Drunk and groaning on about how I can't sing. (laughs) But all you are is mean. All you are is mean. And a liar. And pathetic. And alone in life. And mean. And mean. And mean. And mean. But someday... I'll be singing this on my podcast, and all you're ever gonna be is mean. 
Yeah, someday I'll be living in a big old city And all you're ever gonna be is mean Why you gotta be so mean? (laughs) Why do they gotta be so mean, Astro Lovers? I don't know. We might not ever know, but that's okay. That's on them. It's not on us. <laughs> Welcome to the podcast for the week of July 17th through the 23rd, 2023. I'm going to let you know right now, the overall vibe this week is insanity. <laughs> and it's peppered with uh, some meanness and frustrations and some energetic reversals and Going backwards, having to look back, pause, reflect, and figure out where you're meant to go. There are so, so, so many major aspects. We've got one, two, three, four, five. That's just, that's five majors. And that's and that's like, you know, we've got a Cancer New Moon this week. We have the Nodes of Fate, which only change signs every 18, 19 months. They're changing signs on the same day. So now we're setting the global consciousness for a completely different vibe than we've had the last year and a half. No biggie. Then we jump towards the weekend. We've got Venus retrograde. We've got the Sun entering Leo. And we have on the... Sunday, the 23rd, Chiron, our wounded healer stationing retrograde. This is a lot of potent, dominant energy. So with a week like this week, I am going to highly, highly, highly encourage you to just take a freaking beat. There's going to end now th- those are just those are just the majors. There's other aspects that are that are influencing this insanity as well. And so I am going to do my best to cover everything and give it its due justice as I can. But just know, this is a week where you really want to be on the Cosmic News train. You're really going to want to be on that newsletter. And there's a link in the show notes for it because I'm going to be sending you notes about each one of these shifts individually to let you know what your sun, moon, and rising sign will will experience while these influences are taking place. Because the Cancer New Moon invites tenderness But then the Aries Libra nodes, which is a shift that happens on the same day as the new moon, which is Monday, the 17th, has us going more bold and brazen. And and the energy is completely different. Like the new moon says, invite warmth and tenderness. Aries Libra nodes are like (laughs) separate but together. (laughs) So... Aries North Node wants to trailblaze, wants to be bold and fearless, where Cancer is more like, I just want to be at home. So what do you do with that? Jumping to Venus retrograde. Now, that's something that only happens every 18 months. And when she goes backwards, it's a 40-day adventure. And, you know retrogrades we know the vibe but now it's venus involved so love money desire attraction pleasure all of these principles are up for review and yes with the venus retrograde the x brigade is likely to come a knocking okay now when i say x's i kind of use that as a blanket term venus is of course the ruler of relationships so yes she can bring back old loves old love stories sometimes it's more internal and as this is a venus retrograde it is likely going to be both right where you're thinking of someone or thinking of a dynamic or they come back you know the ghosts of relationships past failed heart adventures journey back and say oh hey how's it going and it's up to you to decide whether or not you um participate or not 
or just say, <laughs> I forgot I didn't block your ass. Blocked. <laughs> That's totally up to you. But exes is also just a blanket term for people from your past, people that you cared about, lost friendships, lost family dynamics. All those things can come zooming back when you got Venus retrograde. So we're going to talk about that. Now, on the same day as Venus retrograde, which is happening in the sign of Leo, the sun enters Leo. So, uh, Cancers, it's your last week to shine. Not really, but, you know, as a joke. It's your last week of your season, and then Leos are ushering in the summer fun, the summer heat, the summer spontaneity, the joy, the adventure, all of that vibe. But at the same time, that Venus retrograde and the sun traveling through the same sign, just your reflections get amplified. Old relationships that's, the, that's why I use the word zoom in, you know, they just zoom into focus. And then, <laughs> you see what I mean? I'm just, <laughs> there's, there's a lot to talk about this week. And then, Sunday the 23rd, Chiron, our comet of uh, uh, soul wounds and our journey towards healing, stations retrograde. And I've blanketed this as wounds to wisdom. And it's a period of time from July 23rd to December 27th this year, so the rest of this year pretty much, to really reflect on your wound stories, to really allow yourself, whether through self-reflection, self-exploration, or whether it's through support, whether that's a reading, a you know Reiki session, massage, acupuncture, pressure, therapy, counseling, whatever modality calls to you, it is an invitation to unlock your wound story. And sometimes that comes through external influence. Other times you just feel more like it's calling to you, right? It's a whisper that you might have tried to ignore, and then the retrograde like this comes around and it brings it all back up again. So it's an invitation to get to the genesis of the story so that you understand why you make certain decisions, the motivations behind them, especially if you have – if you're someone that tends towards self-sabotage or negative repeated patterns of behavior that maybe you can acknowledge but you don't go past that. If you're somewhere right there and you keep experiencing, whether it's through relationships or just your relationship to self, how you talk to yourself in the mirror, how you feel about yourself, what about your confidence and esteem, all of that is umbrellaed in this soul journey with Chiron. And his symbol is a key. So it's the key to understanding yourself in this lifetime and what you're carrying with you, the layers. Chiron has his first big influence in your life, and it's a big window of time, but from 3 to 23. That is a huge window, but somewhere in the 3 to 23 range, humans as an experience have some kind of soul wound event. And this is what a retrograde like Chiron comes around and kind of just pushes on and nudges on it a little bit and says, hey... Do you want to look at me? Do you want to work with me? Do you want to try and muffle me? And I encourage you to allow your wounds to evolve into wisdom. And that's why I've blanketed this with the phrase wounds to wisdom. It can inform you in a way, in a more powerful way than you're used to. My Chiron's in Gemini in the 10th house. So when it comes to success and my ambition and my big picture goals, for the longest time I was terrified of success. And I also didn't feel like I was worthy of success. And that I had to unlock more of where that was coming from, which for, for me is, is central, central to losing my mom as when I was three. See, the range of Chiron, three to 23. Um, I was right at three, and that turned into a feeling of abandonment. And when that comes, and when it comes to work, 
the thought process in the early in the earlies of my in my early twenties, um, early to mid twenties was well, if not that I was conscious about this way of thinking, but when I learned about Chiron, when I did talk to therapist, the unconscious belief system that that I inherited from that experience was well, if she didn't want me, why would anyone else? Why would I be worthy of? of my of of having big goals and actually chasing them and achieving them if the mo- the person that's supposed to want you the most w- didn't even you know she left me so that's that's what Chiron retrograde invites you to do to get that clarity and to say like oh well that's not true though you know that's not a true story that is just what a 3-year-old's interpretation of an experience downloaded Right. And that was something that I carried with me. And then it was like, oh, so the wounds to wisdom and that was like, no, because this happened, I am now more inspired, more protected, more guided towards success, towards achieving my big goals, to allowing myself to see the big picture and to say, like, yeah, I can do that. I need a plan. You know, it's in the 10th house, it's Saturn, so I'm going to have to take my time and I'm going to have to put the proper building blocks in place. But that is supported because this event took place. And depending on how woo-woo you get, you know, as a guide, I mean, my mom shows up all the time. And so, you know, it this an invitation to just allow yourself to unlock what's beneath the surface at a soul level what do you feel called to resolve call to within yourself um a call to experience in this lifetime so that's a lot it's a that's a big that's a biggie um and as far as news board items go um and then we'll get into the the rest of the week just so we get you know, we cover as much as we can. But the only um, news board items I have are my reading books are open this week, the 17th through the 21st, um, Monday, Wednesday, Friday. I have already informed everyone on the reading request list. Um, and so they have already got their slots. Um, but now it is open season. So if you are someone who wants a reading and you know you want to do it this week, then you got to you gotta send me a note. There's a link in the show notes for a reading request. I will send you the scheduler as soon as you write me so that you can get your reading on the books. My books will close after this week, and they'll reopen sometime in the fall. Okay? So this is your opportunity. And the only other thing I want to cover in Newsboard is a reiteration. This is a week where you need to be on the news train. Okay? Just click that link in the show notes, please, and get on there because I'm going to – I want you to be informed with what the new moon invites you to do, with what the the nodes of fate changing signs for the first time in a year and a half, what that means, what it means for where you've come and where you're going for the next year and a half. And then for the Venus retrograde, that – that retrograde station is going to lead us to the Venus star point on August 13th. So that's a whole nother thing that we'll talk about when we get closer to. But just putting it in your ear, we are going to have a Venus star point, And that is a powerful change of energy when it comes to love, money, desire, pleasure, relationships in general. Okay? She gets way more... Her vibe, she turns into a morning star where she's known as a Venus Lucifer, light bearer. And that's a completely different energy than what we've had for the last 10 to 12 months. So we'll talk more about that. Sun entering Leo, that's another energetic shift. And then the Chiron retrograde, just where, I want you to know where that's taking place in your chart. There's the general of what this what this transit means, but then there is for your sun, moon, and rising signs where that we get a little bit more detailed and where you can kind of just see like, oh, okay, this is where I'm kind of excavating stories around my wounds, my triggers, my traumas, my my experiences as a young as a young human from three to twenty three. Okay? 
Now, let's just, so that's it for the news board. Let's just briefly cover the moons and then get a little bit more, and give you a little bit more info about these major transits this week. Okay, so Monday the 17th, the moon is in Cancer. Of course, we have the new moon at 11.32 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. Remember, all the times I give you in this podcast are Pacific, so make sure you adjust for your time zone. Then the moon on Tuesday, Wednesday, and a little bit of Thursday, the moon is in Leo. So when the moon is in Cancer, we have a focus on home, tenderness, softness, family, foundation. Um, And then when the moon is in Leo, we switch into fun, adventure, joy, what I want versus what other people want, right? Like just really getting clear, being creative, being passionate, being bold, wearing our heart on our sleeves. Very different energy than Cancer. Um, then half uh, half of Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, we have most of Saturday, we have the moon in Virgo. So now fun is over. Time to go like, get, get your stuff together, get organized, do chores, get a to-do list together. Makes those days great days to get work done, to really get be a taskmaster and just like bang it out. Like, oh, I need to clean. I need to um, go to Target. I need to run to the to Petco, I need to, whatever your your duties are, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, great days to plow through them. Even if you want to do a little like summertime cleanse, uh, whether that's a juice, whether that is um, in your closet or underneath the bathroom cabinet or a junk drawer, this is all great stuff because Virgo loves to just clean house and to clean things like that, that's like the perfect time to do all of that. Then, late Saturday, Sunday, going into next Monday, the 24th, and even Tuesday, the 25th, the moon is in Libra, where now, where Virgo is a solo mission to get things done and to just work, 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 the Libra moon says, okay, put the pen and paper down, put the dust cloth down, the Windex can go away now, let's 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 be a partnership, let's be a union, let's... Focus on aesthetic and good times and good food and good wine and just, you know, let's get a little flirty. You know, Virgo moons, hello, you're speaking to one, or one is speaking to you, um, can just be really, really task-oriented and need to need to clean and tidy as a way to process. Libra moon is like, no, 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 no. I would like to be with partner, be with friend, be with relationship in general. And let our hair down. Let's dress up. Let's look nice. Especially with the sun in Leo at that point. Playing dress up is like the way to go. Okay, so that's the vibe. Cancer, Leo, Virgo, and a little bit of Libra there at the end of the week. Um, Cancer initiates. Leo is fixed and wants what it wants. Virgo is mutable. Change, change, change. Libra, cardinal, go, go, go. That's the, the vibe of the... The overall vibe with the moon's energy this week. So now let me take you through <laughs> these. Let me take you through the planet's planetary action this week, okay? So let's just go day by day. On Monday, we have a Mercury square Jupiter. So keep in mind, Mercury's in Leo. The only danger we have with Mercury and Leo is just being selfish, self oriented. Everything is what I want. And we don't take into consideration what someone else wants or needs. So Mercury has a square to Jupiter. Jupiter in Taurus is also fixed, wants what it wants, wants to expand and grow how it wants. Now, so the two principles are coming at each other. And it could just be a lot. Like, oh my God, there's a lot that I want to do. There's a lot that I want to share. But there's too much on my plate. There's It's too much happening. So you might have to kind of uh, prioritize on Monday, I mean, Monday is just a wild day. There's The moon's making a lot of aspects. I'll cover that on a daily dose. If you're not on a daily dose of stars, I encourage you. With the summer that we're going into, I encourage you to look into a daily dose of stars. In the show notes, all the info you need. So Mercury, Jupiter, square, it's a lot of, it's just a lot of energy. It's a lot of activity. It's a lot of think, like thinking of like, oh my gosh, I have this to do. Oh my gosh, I have this to do. So let me let me let me give you a little astro hack here with a Mercury square Jupiter on the heels of a Virgo moon coming. 
Whatever you need to get done on Monday, do that. But then just think, what can I move towards Thursday, Friday, Saturday? Because that Virgo moon is going to help you organize those tasks and get them done. Okay, so if Monday you find yourself like just overloaded, do figure out what needs to be done ASAP and then move things towards Thursday, Friday, Saturday to get them done in in an efficient way. Because you'll have more time if you give yourself Monday, Tuesday. I mean, you can maybe even start on Wednesday if you wanted. Um, But... That, that's a that's a way to use like the energy that's coming because Virgo is, Virgo moons are so good at being able to go bam bam bam. So there's a little astro hack for you. Now Monday too, we have the Cancer New Moon at 11:32 a.m., 24 degrees 56 minutes. So you're gonna want to find Cancer in your chart. Cancer, what houses or just house that Cancer rules in your chart? Where is the moon in your chart? And you'll want to look at 24 degrees. Anything between 22 and 26 is good for me. Um, That's where that new moon is inviting you to manifest tenderness and warmth and comfort across all your relationships. Now, this new moon is coming with an opposition to Pluto. As that's it's um, an aspect that, that happens within eight hours of the new moon. And so there's... Something zooming to consciousness with this new moon, right? New moons initiate a new story. We plant seeds for two weeks, and then six months we see what comes to harvest. So the next two weeks are potent for manifesting this opposition to Pluto. Shadows revealed around the home, the family, work can all come, come, it can feel like it's all being unearthed because Pluto's the underworld and he's exposing the shadow sides of Cancerian themes. Pluto's in Capricorn, meaning work, and Cancer is home family foundation. Foundation being emotional and financial. So there are some of you that will experience with this new moon opportunities, whether they're on the work front or on the home front. Maybe some some folks out there get pregnancy, you know, they, they find out that they're pregnant or they find out that they have a pregnancy story beginning. Some people might get um, career opportunities and offers. That can come up too um, because these things are coming to light. But I want you to take the new moon's energy and, and be proactive with it. So call in if you feel like you're just surrounded by stress and negativity. And this new moon invites you to call in the warmth call in tenderness call in softness if you're running out there just too hard you know no one can break through no one can you know you're just guarded and whatever this is an invitation to to be a little bit more vulnerable and to actually manifest that because vulnerability is more strength than pretending to be stronger than you are i'm going to be sending more on cancer new moon in your inbox so don't worry I'm going to break that down more. Then, Monday, (laughs) the nodes of fate enter Aries and Libra. Now, this is a period of time from July 17th through January 11th, 2025. That big year and a half uh, time span, North Node in Aries, South Node in Libra. This is global focus gets more individualistic. Now, I want you to jump back in your, in your brain to December 25th, 2004 through June 21st, 2006, because that's the last time that we had North Node Aries, South Node Libra. Again, December 25th, 2004, June 21st, 2006, that period of time. Now, an Aries North Node is self-focused. It's mastery of self, uh, direction setting your own compass and bold brave fearless action is awarded but i do a little disclaimer that bold fearless action is awarded over time the north node is we're not we're not great we kind of suck at it so we have to we have to try and try again we we are likely not going to get it right in the beginning and that's fine Eclipse seasons from here on out. We're going to have one more on the Taurus-Scorpio axis in October, November. 
But we will have our first eclipse with the Aries Libra nodes in October. And we will be, or that might even be end of September, but come this fall, we'll have now, because the nodes set the eclipse stories. So now we're, we're, getting, we're getting an idea here that the North Node is pushing us towards bold bravery, fearless action. And over time, we will get it right. Just think back to 2004 to 2000, well, the end of 04. So really, 2005, 2006. Like, what were you doing? This theme is back up again, but if you could do it all different, knowing that, because this is here we are now's your chance this is your opportunity to do that story different 18 19 years later stay with us we'll be right back hey i want to get in your ear real quick there are a lot of spiritual viewpoints and perspectives that you can subscribe to you know there's astrology numerology Feng Shui, there's Akashic Records, there's Past Life Regressions, there's Destiny Cards. There is just any number of ways that you can tap into the universe to get insight, to help you create the life you want to live, to create abundance and prosperity, love and relationships, connection, all those things. And I recognize that there is a lot and that at times it can be overwhelming and it can be hard to... Figure out who to go to. Who can I listen to? Who can I trust? So this is why I created the How to Manifest Big in 2024 series. If you're not already listening to it, it's available wherever you're listening to this podcast already. But you can also watch each interview on DrunkAstro.com. There's a whole page there for it. And I've linked the series in the show notes. So in this series, one, I want you to I want you to know all the d- different tools that you can use to manifest big this year because the life that you want, the life that you deserve, it is waiting for you and there are a number of methods to consider, spiritual and non-spiritual. Okay? I'm in this series I'm not only talking to Tali from the Astro Twins, not only talking to Christina Hollinger, a feng shui expert, about how to feng shui your living space, your workspace, to create a space that is high vibration and that attracts the life you want to live. I'm not only talking to a crystal expert about what crystals are good for the energy of 2024's unique energy. Not only talking to a symbologist, a destiny card reader. Have you ever heard of that? Because I hadn't heard of that until I met um, CJ, who is the destiny card reader I bring into this um, series. Um, I'm not only talking to spiritual folks. I'm talking to an intimacy expert because love and relationships are at the top of a lot of our list, single or not single. We can all learn how to be more intimate with each other, be more authentically expressing ourselves. I'm also talking to Elise Joan, a beach body super trainer and longevity expert, because it's not about just creating an amazing life. It's about living a long life, one that you love, one that you want to be healthy for, one that you want to actually stay in for the long haul. So this series is set up to to get you in alignment from all different angles. So if you haven't already, go catch up on the episodes that have already aired. And the new episodes that are coming, every single Wednesday, a new episode will drop until the series is finished. So go back, drunkastro.com. There's a whole page for how to manifest big in 2024. All the videos are there. Watch the interviews. There's a link to this in the show notes. It'll get you right where you need to be. Okay? We're doing this this year. You're doing this this year. Your your, um, Manifest Big in 2024 journal, that is the foundation of what you're going to use this year to set goals that you're actually going to achieve. Now, all these other tools in the How to Manifest Big in 2024 series, these are all going to enhance your vibe. 
enhance the vibe of your living space, your heart set, your mindset, your body set, you are going to be. There's no way by using the Manifest Big in 2024 journal, by tapping into the How to Manifest Big in 2024 series, this is all you need. It's all you need. Okay? So in case you haven't got into it, this was just a little reminder. needed to get that in your ear. Let's get back to this episode and keep up this vibration. It's a big it's a big chance there, big opportunity. We've done the Aries North Node, but the Libra South Node, releasing relationship dynamics, obligations, or expectations that are holding you back in some way. And this is where I beg the question, and this is what the globally, how the question that we have to ask ourselves on a big scale. So global consciousness, how can we be separate and together? But now that's also relevant towards us as individuals. Within relationship dynamics, how can we go after what we want? How can we take it upon ourselves to move and take action while allowing others to do the same so you can you can you can be in partnership and have two completely different goals and uh, momentums and directions but how can you do that together it's this separate but together energy and that's what we're going to be working through for the next year and a half don't worry you're not going to have it figured out overnight it's not the nature of the nodes (laughs) they're learning curves now Thursday, Sun Trine Neptune, beauty, 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 beauty. That is dreams come true. That is just uh, just an awesome, awesome um, energy for dreaming about the future, planning for the future. What does it look like? What does it feel like? What are you doing? On the same day, though, we have a Mars-Saturn opposition. Now, this is disappointment. This is not getting what you want. This is anger. You know, Mars is in Virgo just trying to get things done. Saturn in Pisces has expectations. So this could also be a toxic dynamic, and there can be frustration and fights and anger with this kind of energy. So you want to just watch out for that on Thursday. There's, it's, you know, that's a not an either-or kind of day. It's an and kind of day. Like dreams come true, and I'm also frustrated. Um, You can very much have that very human experience on Thursday. On Friday, we have a Sun-Pluto opposition. Now, this is going to, it's just like a a second touch from the new moon on Monday when we had the moon opposite Pluto. So we get a little preview of whatever that is, and then Friday, it zooms into focus. This Sun in Cancer, Home family foundation story, Pluto and Capricorn, retrograde, work story, work, what I want to achieve. So there you could see that from Monday's new moon, Friday there is a connect, there's a connection there um, between Monday, what comes to light on Monday, and what you do um, the follow-up on Friday. There's also a Mercury Chiron trine Friday night, late at night, so that also goes into Saturday. Um you just don't let self-doubt get the best of you. Mercury Chiron trine is exciting, and it's new, and it's forward motion, and you might feel like, I'm a little scared. I don't know. Can I do this? Yes, you can do this. You wouldn't, you wouldn't be here if you couldn't. <sighs> Saturday, I'm going to catch my breath because this is all going really fast. You might want to re-listen to this podcast a couple times. <laughs> Saturday, Venus stations retrograde at 6.33 p.m. at 28 degrees, 36 minutes of Leo. So where's Venus in your chart? Where is Leo in your chart? Um, Because Venus is going to be trekking through, talking to those planets, moving through those houses. The sun enters Leo at 6.50 p.m., so both things happening simultaneously. Sun enters Leo, so of course, this period of time with the Venus retrograde is reclaiming your confidence, reclaiming passion, love, joy. This is basically like main character energy, getting yourself reconnected to the main character within you of like, 
I'm going to be bold. I'm going to play dress up. I'm going to host a themed party. I'm going to be fabulous. I'm going to be a, I'm going to be seen. So if you're single and you're trying to mingle, then you better you better try some things. You better try on some new clothes. But here's what I will say. Venus retrograde, 40 days of things to avoid, and I'm going to write this all up and send it to you. So, you already know, Cosmic News Train. Avoid drastic relationship decisions. Uh, dramatic haircuts, new tattoos. Venus is aesthetic, so aesthetic changes we want to make to ourselves. Just you know, hold off on anything crazy. Um, avoid any major creative launches. Far away trips can get a little dicey during this time. Just take your time. Take your friggin' time. Sometimes with Venus retrograde, we can we can feel like things are dull. We can feel like we're stuck. We can be a little complacent. This is normal, but it's also temporary. So I'm I'm trying to arm you now so you don't freak out during this patch of time. Um, My little message here is go where you shine the most. You might discover that during Venus retrograde, relationships that kind of dulled your shine, kind of dimmed your glow or were prevalent. And they could come back. Or those dynamics within present relationships come back. Or they come up and you kind of have to decide, like, "Mm, I don't know if this this isn't really adding to my shine or encouraging my glow. This is something else. You 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 might experience, you know, some toxic shit. In relationships during Venus retrograde, and it's you just have to acknowledge it for what it is and move through it. It's 40 days, we it only happens every 18 months, and it's necessary. So, if you and especially if you're feeling like you're stuck, you know, that you have to know is temporary. And when it comes to relationships, this is this is what we need in order to decide like oh here's how we can avoid this for the next 18 months right the solution to the stuckness is fill in the blank it's what you're going to be exploring and then last but not least on sunday chiron stations retrograde at 5:42 a.m. again this is a period of time from july 23rd to december 27th turning wounds to wisdom Do not try and stifle whatever emotional experiences come your way. Whether they are excited by an external event or it is just something internally happening within you, Chiron is asking you to work with him in some capacity. And acknowledgement is first, but then taking necessary steps to unlock what's beneath the surface is the next step after that. Okay? Don't shy away from your soul, especially because this is your soul path, and healing lives within Chiron. Okay? There's there's even more that we could discuss, but I, it's, it's yep, yep, I'm just going to leave this at that because this is a big week, a lot going on. I will be in your inbox pretty often with notes, about all of these things, but one by one in little bite-sized munches. So I'm I'm going to trust that you're on the Cosmic News train because I don't want anybody yelling at me like, I didn't, I didn't know. You know. Lots going on. Have a great week. If anybody's mean, <laughs> you know. Don't forget, I called Saturn and Pisces the no toxic bitches era for a reason. Now Venus retrograde is throwing in her her uh you know her key in the in the ring. So if that happens to be part of your story, just reply with either a block or hashtag this is my no, this is my hashtag no toxic bitch era. Goodbye. <laughs> and on that note, have a great week. I'll see you soon. Bye. Hey, one last thing before we go. Who are three people you could share this episode with? Who would benefit from learning astrology in real time? From learning how to work with the energy of the cosmos, from tracking the patterns and cycles, to seeing it in real time in motion? Can you text them right now?
can you send that message and just say, I'm going to share this show with you because I think that you would really vibe with learning in this way. I would appreciate it. They would appreciate it. And you'll feel good knowing that you're spreading the love. Let's keep that high vibration going. I'll see you next week. Bye.